Welcome to Take It Up with Jessica Lee. My guest today is Luan Lam from Harness. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. You are the VP of Talent. Yes. Tell us what does that mean? Yeah, so the VP of Talent, I would say the world of, of, of HR, if you will, has okay. evolved over time. Uh, talent is what, it, what it's called mm -hmm. today, or the people function, if you will. And mm -hmm. then within that, there are two two groups, if you will, the talent acquisition team and the, the talent management. Okay. So I run both. Acquisition behind. and management. So yes. uh, get the right talent into the company and then retain them and keep them and Correct. grow them. Nurture and grow Nurture them. them. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. I know it's a big challenge for a lot of tech companies yes. recruiting <laughs> for engineering especially. Uh, Correct. Especially in the Bay Area. Yes. You actually uh, are now at Harness, but right before that, you were at AppDynamics, and you scale that team. You talk about the culture, and I, I would like to discuss how do you build a culture that's a high-performing culture? Team? That's a great. Yep, that's a great question. So before going into that, um, let me kind of just give you a, a quick overview of kind of my background. I came to AppDynamics when it was about 150 employees and helped scale that organization to almost 2,000 people before I left uh, with the successful exit of $3.7 billion into Cisco. So uh, Jyoti founded Harness, which is a continuous delivery service as a platform yes. that, autom uh, that uses uh, machine learning mm. to actually simplify the whole entire process of, of delivering code from artifact into production okay. in real time quickly, safely, securely, and repeatedly. And then it rolls back if there's an issue? Correct, okay. there's an issue and this is all done in real uh, time. Uh, okay. so, so organizations are now are not afraid of pushing out deployments in real time and not afraid of being something breaking in between, right? right? So, so with that said, going back to your, uh, your question about growing a company and the culture, mm -hmm. how important it is, um, just kind of seeing how AppDynamics scaled, one of the important ingredients was how do we retain the culture that we had, mm -hmm. right? So that comes with really having three successful storytelling uh, chapters, if you will. First is kind of the market story, okay. right? Like what market are you addressing, mm -hmm. right? The product story. Like technology, how does it speak to say, a developer okay. wanted to come to your company? And last would be the culture piece, right? How do you actually foster an environment that is diverse and people want to belong to and that people feel proud of being there? And we did just that at, at App Dynamics okay. and we're also building that uh, at, at Harness. Harness as well. And when you joined App Dynamics, was the 150 people, yeah. and then you scale it to 2,000. Almost 2,000 before very I left. Quickly, yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so the, 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 about the less than a little less than five years I was there, mm -hmm. we very aggressive growth, mm -hmm. uh, and, and and the whole entire time. One of the last years I was there, we hired over 600 people in one year. There has to be a process, a way to uh, do this at scale, like. How do you yep. attract people? How do you manage all of that? How yep. do you, you know, there has to be a tool or something. Did you have a tool or something? Yeah, we do. So we, I, I, I would say that we are, I would coin a term, uh, untraditional TA team at, at AppDynamics, if you will, and we are doing that harness as well, uh, was the fact that I think we finally cracked the code in recruiting. Mm. We started running at like a sales organization. So if you think about a sales organization where you have a number of, of reps responsible for a number of revenue, okay. right? So that the math just doesn't lie. You mm. have to have 10 reps if you want $30 million okay. in revenue. Okay. The same way, a number of recruiters to a number of hires in any given quarter, any given year. Okay. And that's the math that we did. Okay. But beyond that, what we did was we utilized tools and systems to automate a lot of our processes, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. In between, for example, we deployed um, uh, a, a, a nurturing, candidate nurturing system called Outreach uh, to really kind of create that live database where we, we touch individuals who were not ready to make the move, mm -hmm. but we kept them in a process. Mm -hmm. And we set pings every quarter also to get a ping from us and from my team. Uh, you know, like Nurturing. Yeah, That's like a marketing it's campaign. It's a marketing campaign. Drip it's campaign. It's a drip campaign. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. So, so if you think about it, why would you not utilize that mm -hmm. for your internal recruiting function? So, what is the ratio? If you want to bring in one engineer, uh -huh. how many candidates do you have to canvas and, and bring? Right. 
Good question. And this is one of the things that I taught my, my team all the time is not all recruiters are created equally. Okay. So it all depends on who you are as a recruiter. And I always asked all of my team members to ask themselves who they are as recruiters. Mm -hmm. For example, it only takes one person, right? To make that one higher, mm -hmm. right? However, there are many factors involved, uh, whether or not the candidate is ready to make the move, mm -hmm. whether or not he or she is involved with three out of four of the companies that he or she is interviewing with. So, so with that said, we actually started doing conversion rates, just like in the sales process. Mm -hmm. Starts with a funnel. Mm -hmm. If you need to make a million dollars, right, as a revenue target for that quarter, yeah. How much do you have to have in the pipeline right. in terms of customers equates to uh, the potential dollar mm -hmm. amount mm -hmm. to net you that one million? Okay. We adopted the same process. Okay. So we actually figured out uh, at a minimum, if a recruiter needs to make a hire uh, for the month, especially in engineering, yep, yep. he or she should have about seven qualified Seven qualified candidates screened candidates mm -hmm. in the pipeline because if you think about a drop off rate at every stage mm -hmm. of the process mm -hmm. let's just assume if you have say eight candidates and the drop off rate is 25% from you know submitting that person uh, those candidates into onto a phone screen um, you might drop from 8 to 6 okay and let's say after the phone screen process uh, onto an on-site, that might be a 50% drop-off rate. Mm -hmm. So now you're down to four. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So another 50% drop-off rate would be two to the offer okay. stage. Okay. And perhaps another 50% for someone to accept an offer, Okay. right? So again, I always told all my recruiters, ask yourself, how do you work? Right. It all depends. It doesn't. It doesn't take eight sometimes or seven sometimes. It might take just one. Mm -hmm. But you have to know who you are as a recruiter mm -hmm. in managing your own numbers. So I think we also allowed our team members to be creative and the freedom for them to to work their numbers mm -hmm. accordingly to okay. how they work right, right. as well. Now it's very salesy uh, what you're saying, and that's because the, did you come from a sales background at all? Interestingly enough, <laughs> funny that you asked. Um, yes, um, at, at, at the crash uh, in 2009, I was at a, uh, a couple of startups. Mm -hmm. I actually was at a company called SnapLogic and okay. also a company called Jamin, mm -hmm. uh, founded by Gaurav Dillon, both founded by Gaurav Dillon, who founded Informatica oh, okay. and took the company public. Um, yeah, in 2009, I actually did sell software for about a year. I have to tell you, probably the hardest job I ever had mm. in my whole entire career. Uh, it was tough to try to pry two dollars out of someone's hand, <laughs> uh, left alone, right, a couple hundred right. thousand dollars. But that's where you learn about the funnel, the yeah. leads, the conversion, uh, and then you apply that to HR now. To right, HR. right, and, and, and beyond that is the marketing piece, which we mm -hmm. touched on earlier, mm -hmm. is the drip campaign. Yes. But even even beyond that is, is how do you create the messaging, mm -hmm. right? So. Recruiting is, is an art of selling. Yes. How do you sell and how do you tell that story? Yeah, yeah. Like the company story, the people story, the culture story is important. So I focus a lot on branding as well. Okay, that's that's great. So right now at Harness, uh, what's the employee size? Yeah, so we actually have uh, tripled the size of the company since I've been there. Okay. I've been there now for about, gosh, going on nine months okay. with the company and we have taken the company from about 30 something of us to almost 100, 100. today. And mm -hmm. you have uh, customers and things yeah. are going very well and you're looking to scale that to X number of employees. Uh, yes. Kind of a similar journey to Yeah, very App similar Dynamics. journey. The only difference is we're going a lot faster ah. than we were at App Dynamics. Uh, series A, like I said, we're already at 100 mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. uh, still in Series A uh, today. We uh, came out the first year of selling with um, quite a number of really good pay c paid customers mm -hmm. uh, and we are now operating out of five different locations. Okay. Headquarters is in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. uh, we stood up our development center in Bangalore, mm -hmm. India. Mm -hmm. uh, we stood up our UK division uh, two quarters ago. Good. We established our APAC entity just last month okay. and now uh, we are also launching an office in Dallas, okay. Texas. Um, besides Harness, you're very busy. You are also involved in the Unusual Ventures 
Yes. Uh, which is a VC fund, right? Correct. Tell us about that. Yeah, so, so Unusual, Unusual Ventures uh, was co-founded by John Veronis, who came out from Lightspeed, and uh, Jyoti Banzo himself. So we raised about $160 million mm -hmm. for that fund, mm -hmm. and our goal is to fund, um, uh, do seed funding, okay. early stage, yeah. very early stage, seed funding. And, and the reason why the unusual name was coined mm -hmm. is we are doing things a little unusually okay, at, at, at the firm. Uh, for example, uh, we have committed ourselves to actually donating a, a, a percentage of the profit that we that we get at the end of the day to nonprofits mm -hmm. across the U.S. Um, and hospitals as well, and also black colleges. Mm -hmm. uh, we are very very dedicated to uh, the whole you know social corporate responsibility. Yeah. Number one, number two. The internal mo uh, model of the firm is very different. Mm -hmm. We are definitely, def definitely dedicated to enabling our uh, portfolio companies to be successful. For example, on my side of the house and how I get involved is I actually get involved with portfolio companies that we have funded earlier on to really show them how to capture the talent market. Okay. Right? to tell that story, the company story, the product story, the people culture story, and also not only that, but we go in and actually help them build out the TA foundation from the ground up. So as they continue to scale and grow, they already have the infrastructure mm -hmm. in-house mm -hmm. to go and, t and attract, not only attract, but be able to hire mm -hmm. the right talent. Talk about LinkedIn a bit, because I know mm -hmm. that's like the place <coughs> now for professionals yep. to have their career on there, and uh, a lot of people go there to look for talent. Um, your thoughts on LinkedIn and how it has changed sure. the HR business? Absolutely, and I think, you know, for a lot of us who, who started our career before LinkedIn, uh, we were known at head as headhunters, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you really have to go on and headhunt people for jobs. So when LinkedIn came around, it was, really, you know, it, it was the greatest technology ever invented uh, for people in my in my career. Um, however, with that said, I think over, over the years, I think people became a little complacent mm -hmm. about relying on just LinkedIn mm -hmm. as their uh, one tool to go to. Uh, I actually am a whole, I'm, I'm, I'm a believer in terms of going out and, and, and do things the traditional way as well, mm. right? Having that connection, building that network, keeping them in what I call a live database, mm -hmm. uh, kind of keep a mental check of, of, of all the people that you have in play. Uh, even if they're not ready today, it's just like a drip campaign that we normally would I do, uh, is to keep them in the network, okay. uh, whether it's LinkedIn or not LinkedIn, uh, so that once we have funded a company that we quickly would be able to to assess who would be a right fit I for see. those outfits. I see. So you have all of these uh, communications going on with people who are currently happy working wherever they are, mm -hmm. but you know their strengths, and whenever there's a uh, funding for a new startup, mm -hmm. you might want to match them up. And Absolutely. Okay. And, and you know, it's having that conversation up front and also kind of being able to keep them in a network, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I think our firm, the Unusual Ventures, uh, speaks to a lot of people in terms of our commitment to give back, mm -hmm. right? Uh, not a lot of firms can say that, but right off the bat, I mean, we go into our website. That is something that we proudly, uh, you know, declare that that we want to help nonprofit organizations, hospitals, and black colleges. I mean, we are encouraging people to actually step up and take, you know, more uh, responsibility. Do good. Yeah, right? to do good. Do yeah, good. yeah. yeah. Um, so I want to ask you about diversity and inclusion. Yes. Being in a you know, VP of talent, you can make a big impact. So how are you doing on the diversity yep. and inclusion? Front? Yeah, uh, good question. So, so that topic is so near and dear to my heart. Um, I remember trying to stand up the women in technology, uh, which we call WIT. Uh, WIT uh, at App Dynamics about 30 days into my employment there and, and, and I'm not sure if everybody was behind it. Mm -hmm. Not to say that they weren't behind the whole concept of having a diversity and inclusion and belonging mm -hmm. initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, it was because it might be too early 
yeah. in the game for that. Mm -hmm. And also, I came in at, at a very critical time when I needed to scale the company from 150 to 300 mm -hmm. in nine months. Mm -hmm. So it was a big task and, and, and trying to build infrastructure while I was doing that and build my own entire team yes. from the ground up. So it was really tabling the different initiatives, but that initiative was so important to me and I, I knew it was important to the organization as well, so I pushed for it. Mm -hmm. So we stood that up and probably at Dynamics is known for having a really, really well run and robust women in technology um, program. And, and, and that's just one of them, right? So when we talk about diversity and, and, and DNI and belonging, mm -hmm. we're not just talking about just women, right? Yes. Obviously, that's one part of it. Right. Uh, other groups that we should be also thinking about, whether it's uh, the Hispanics, MBA, right a uh, group or other uh, groups as well veterans for example is a good uh, but also think about diversity of thought mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. right how how do you make sure that you have a diverse group of individuals that would come to the table with different opinions right okay. to scale and propel the company forward right. now but my take usually on diversity and inclusion when it comes to hiring is that our job is to fill the pipeline with a diverse group right. of talent and made the best person win. Yes. We should not make allowances for someone to be within the company because of certain factors. Right. 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 The, the person with the most technical fit and cultural fit should always win. But how do you make sure there's no <clears throat> unconscious biases in the decision making when you have men making the decision? Very, very good question. So uh, we put our managers through the unbiased training, okay. right? And I think people don't realize that they have biases, biases, uh, and, until they actually um, go through the training and mm. understanding, mm. you know, what they are, you know, what they are close to, mm. right? Mm. Closed in terms of like their minds to. So, yes. so that exercise actually helps open them up mm. to a new world of really evaluating candidates. Beyond just diversity and inclusion, the area, the area that I think needs discussion uh, is pay equality. Yes. If someone feels like, you know, I might not be paid <coughs> equally, what, what should they do? They shouldn't, they sh well, first of all, as a talent leader or as a talent uh, and a professional, your job is to make sure that that, that doesn't happen. And, and I get that it does still happen. Um, so one of the things that we should, well, for us, for example, at Harness is we have a role, we have identified what we are looking for, mm -hmm. we set um, the amount or the budget for that, and that usually is done with the market right, uh, analysis of what we're paying for, and it doesn't matter if it's male or female who gets that job, mm -hmm. it's the same. Mm -hmm. It's the same budget right. that we're paying for, okay. right? So, so that's number one. I think it starts with really the TA team at any given company mm -hmm. uh, to put their foot down and go, okay, wait, wait, wait. So we budgeted this amount, but because John Doe is now coming and we're giving him 10K more, that's not the right move, right? So it starts with that. It starts ed with educating the TA team internally how to do things right. It starts with the TA team having a voice to voice that when they see something is not right mm -hmm. and to escalate that and make sure that people are course corrected so everyone is on the same track. And then do you do some kind of survey company why and, and make sure that the, those metrics actually stay uh, as you uh, intend them to? Mm -hmm. Or do they shift because people ask for promotions? Well, I, I, I think I think promotions or, or uh, merit increases um, I would say that's the exception, mm -hmm. but you definitely need to do a sanity check. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Uh, in, in, or, or salary integrity check mm -hmm. across organization. If for some reason that you do see Susan Smith is being paid 15K lower mm -hmm. than John Doe, who's in the same job, then you know there's pay inequality. Right. And, right. and that's when you need to step up and fix it. Okay. Wonderful. I'm really glad to hear that. I think you mentioned glass door as an yes. area. So t talk about that. Uh, if yeah. you're interested in recruiting women uh, from, for engineering roles. Yeah. So, so I, I think, if, you know, think of glass door as your Yelp. Okay. if you will, okay. for services and restaurants. Mm -hmm. And, and um, so, so Glassdoor serves as a way for 
potential candidates or potential uh, uh, employees to go in and actually do a quick background check mm -hmm. on your company, okay. right? Uh, so it on Glassdoor, there are reviews. I mean, those are, I would say most of the time, are very true. Mm -hmm. Whether people are happy or unhappy, that would go to Glassdoor mm -hmm. to write about it. Right. Um, so, so that's one portion of it. But Glassdoor also is, is a good way to use it. Now, you talked about LinkedIn, right? Yes. As the kind of the, the one tool that people normally use. Uh, I challenge that. Glassdoor is actually is a good way to also market your jobs, your company, your product, and also getting talent. Mm -hmm. So one of the campaigns that I'm actually getting ready to launch again with Glassdoor is, is um, really targeting uh, females in technology. Okay. And as you all, as we know, mm -hmm. just women in, in technology in itself is, is uh, scarce, right? So how do you promote, how do you reach them, and how do you uh, promote your company in, or in the right way for people to, to gravitate towards you right, if, you're, right. if they are women. Right. <clears throat> so, so if you go on Glassdoor and you looked at Harness, uh, we made it a point to make sure that women will feel comfortable coming into the organization. Yeah. Uh, in fact, we are now, I just actually we had a company kickoff and we are training uh, north of 20% in terms of the female population, mm -hmm. which for a small technology company, it's a great step in the right direction yes, for yes. us. You're doing a great job then. Again, it's, it's really, it starts from filling the funnel yes. with a diverse uh, pool of candidates. Yeah, but with certain uh, metrics in mind that you've already set out that you want to make sure you bring in uh, a, a funnel of diverse talent mm -hmm. to be considered right? yep. and that you're putting in place to make sure there is, uh, minimize any uh, pay inequality. Correct. Uh, Correct. Um, and the, the all of the practices that you did at App Dynamics, you're applying it to the culture now at Harness. Absolutely, and especially all the lessons learned, what to do and what not to do mm -hmm. again. Uh, I think this time around, that, that's why I was saying earlier that we are yes scaling, but we're scaling a lot faster mm -hmm. because I think the second time around, you can do uh, a better job. Yes. Yeah, and we, we know what's around the corner. And you're helping all of these startups that you're seeding uh, also to try to get them uh, on the right path when it comes to recruiting and retaining talent. Yeah, it's, it's so important because most of the time, these are first time founders and CEOs. Mm -hmm. um, they might have been involved in other organizations and mm -hmm. just growing them, but they have never been the one growing yes. right? their own startup. Right. So our job is to educate them or I, would, I shouldn't say educate, but to arm them with the right resources, information okay. for them to actually have a solid foundation from from day one right. when okay. it comes to thinking about growing the talent pool, right? Okay. Whether it's, again, when it comes to messaging, storytelling, to branding, mm -hmm. right? Because employer branding is very different from employee branding. Okay. It's, it's what people are gravitating towards your company okay. uh, that you should showcase, okay. right? The personality. That, that, that people are looking for in the company. The persona has to be there. Okay, excellent. I'm learning so much. Thank well, you so thank much you. for coming onto the show and sharing all this. Thank you very much for having me. I, it's, it's a pleasure and, and thank you for watching. So Harness is hiring big time? We are, we are, <laughs> all across the globe. So if you're interested, please visit us on our, on our website, harness.io. There you have it. Take it up with Jessica Lee. Thanks for watching. Thank you.